Forged in the dark side of Japan, the MT-09 has hit legendary status. Its snarling engine and unconventional design setting the benchmark for naked bikes. 2021 sees the MT-09 reborn, an all-new engine, heavily revised geometry and R1-derived electronics. It's loaded to the T and is ready to fight it out against the very best in its class. To say Yamaha's MT-09 has been a successful project would be a massive understatement. They may have not won every press test or proved to be the outright fastest middleweight naked around the racetrack, but you only have to go to a few bike meets to figure out that loads of people bought them. So what is it like? Well, initial impressions are that it's bonkers brilliant and just about everything that you'd want from a naked road bike. It's exciting, so fast, and makes you want to ride like a hooligan. The MT-09 was inspired by the dark side of Japan and it lures the dark side out of you as a rider. We have to start with the engine. It's one of the finest engines in motorcycling. And if I could find a way to stick the MT-09 engine in my GSX-R 750 frame, I'd do it. The prospect of an upcoming R9 may be speculation right now, but my gut feeling is that it would make an incredible sports bike. The Yamaha CP3 Triple is legendary for good reason and the new one is fantastic. The way it behaves just boggles the mind. Flavors of V-twin grunt delivered with flavors of smooth and easy to ride four cylinder. People say that's how a three cylinder motor characteristically behaves, which is a bit like saying a Michelin star steak dinner is just beef. The Yamaha chefs have served up a Michelin star dish with this engine. And as a rider, I want to come back for more. It just pulls and pulls from anywhere in the rev range and makes for a very exciting motorcycle. Any reports of snatchy fueling in previous models have been resolved. It's lovely and there is no need for an aftermarket remap. It also provides a fantastic soundtrack. At full throttle, it's lovely and addictive. On the airfield, we clocked the YAM at 0-60 in 3.5 seconds, 0-100 in 6.5 and 0-120 in 9.5 seconds. In our experience, it's hard to get much faster to 100 miles an hour than that on any naked bike, irrespective of engine size and power figures, with more powerful bikes only pulling away at speeds above 100 miles an hour. The MT-09 has a reputation as a wheelie machine. It's the machine of choice at the Extreme Wheelie School and the bike that I learned on. Riding one again on this test, it proved itself the one-wheeled king, allowing huge and controlled wheelies right down the airstrip. The MT-09's ability to do this is a byproduct of how much snap the motor has and simultaneously how easy it is to modulate that power. Connected to the hugely potent engine are the all new R1 derived electronics and are a real distinctive of the model, class leading in our opinion. Super simple to use from a rider's point of view and yet super sophisticated. Not being familiar with Yamaha's latest electronics, it initially took me a little while to get used to, mainly from the point of view that I couldn't actually feel anything working. Normally with modern electronics turned on, try and clutch up a wheelie with wheelie control turned on and the engine cuts abruptly, slamming you back down to the floor. Not so with Yamaha electronics. With lift control turned to level two, a beautiful, controlled and uninterrupted small power wheelie can be had. Three and onwards, the front wheel is planted, yet with no feeling of power reduction. 
This single feature made our acceleration test with the KTM 890 Duke R a doddle. On the airfield, we were pinned to the throttle stop from launch without risk of looping it, and this combined with its excellent stability to make the Yamaha the most consistent and easy machine out of the two to ride fast in a straight line. It's a beautiful combination, a snappy, hooligan-capable engine with an electronics package that can tame it in such a way that anybody of any ability would feel confident riding it. The flexible and refined nature of the MT-09's engine and electronics package plays into the way it feels to ride. This is one of the most relaxed naked bikes I've ever ridden, with a very upright riding position, high bars, low seats and low foot pegs. It's genuinely all day comfortable and wouldn't be out of place as a touring machine. It also looks the part. And it's fair to say that the new MT has divided opinion on the looks front, but we love it. It's powerful, aggressive, and fits with the dark side of Japan mantra. The quality of the paintwork is lovely, and it matches the gold Olin shock and gold fork tubes. The underbelly exhaust system fits with the bike, but it does take a bit of maintenance to keep it looking right. Our press bike had 1,000 miles on it, and it was already quite corroded. But with a bit of elbow grease and some Harpic, it polished up just nicely. I think owners would want to keep on top of this as the exhaust system is open to the elements and is very visible. Handling wise, the MT-09 used to come under some criticism, but this has been addressed with a mix of a new suspension package and big geometry changes for 2021. Our SP model sports an Olin shock and KYB premium forks. It's a supportive ride that's very predictable. It's got light steering and is planted. A quality job. I think with some more time with the bike and with a professional setup to weight and riding style, we could have got the bike better. Having recently seen my dad have a 140 miles an hour tank slapper crash at a racetrack, it's fair to say that I'm a bit wary of bikes not fitted with steering dampers. Therefore, when taking the MT-09 on the airfield for high-speed testing, it was definitely in the back of my mind. However, in comparison to the 890 Ju car fitted with said damper, the MT-09 was the more stable machine, and the front end was incredibly planted. However, for serious track work, we would want to figure out a way to attach an aftermarket one. And speaking of track work, there are clearly intentions there. The MT-09 is the only bike I can think of, other than my GSX-R 750, to come with height adjustable rear sets, improving ground clearance for track work and higher lean angles. Topping off the amazing things about the 2021 MT-09 is the way it's priced, making it super accessible to most riders who are looking for a new motorcycle. Our Devit quoted insurance prices are also spookily affordable, and reported reliability from owners is excellent. The MT-09 is an incredible machine, and in our book, battles neck and neck with the KTM 890 Duke R as the best middleweight naked available in 2021. But are there any black marks against the bike from the dark side of Japan? Like all bikes, it isn't perfect, and there are some things that we picked up. Firstly, the brakes and the ABS integration is really not good. Apply the brakes hard on the Yamaha MT-09 and the ABS cuts in in such a way that you feel like you're propelling towards the hazard rather than actually stopping. The system is way too keen. It doesn't allow any rear wheel lift and is a pretty big downside in our opinion. We did find a way of temporarily disabling it by either doing a burnout running the rear wheel in a paddock stand, or just pulling a massive wheelie. Disabling the ABS transforms the brake performance with much more power and feel than with it turned on, leading me to believe that the hardware is actually quite good. It's just that the ABS integration is bad. I think for track work or for any aggressive type of riding off legal roads, I would want to disable the ABS as it just spoils the fun. 
Secondly, the turning circle on the MT-09 isn't great. This isn't a problem on normal riding, but during low speed maneuvers and tight switchbacks, it feels more like a sports bike than the agile and flickable naked that it should. And you often find yourself running out of turning space. You definitely wouldn't want to do a motor Gymkhana on this bike. And the last downside we picked up was a bit of a surprise. Now we own a Yamaha WR250F Enduro bike and Ollie owns an R1 Anniversary Special. And the final finishing on both bikes is beautiful, giving a really high quality feel. Having recently seen the new R1M in the flesh, that bike again is next level. Unfortunately, parts of the 2021 MT-09 are a bit scrappy in our opinion. And whether that's part of the revealed wiring loom that are messily taped together, the horn that's very obviously on show, or the lamber sensor that pokes awkwardly out of the exhaust downpipes. Now this is quite different to the R1 where massive effort has clearly been taken to hide some of this stuff. It doesn't feel like it's the result of cost cutting, it's more just a lack of care on the last few percent on the design front. And that's a real shame because the rest of the bike is amazing, including the beautiful paint scheme. But again, the 2021 MT-09 is such a brilliant bike. Wish your prospective owners will overlook these downsides in the hunt of one of the purest and most brilliant naked bikes ever produced. We think it's amazing and we're pretty sure everyone else who gets to own one will too. So the last couple of days have been absolutely fantastic riding the all new Yamaha MT-09 SP. What a motorcycle. It's absolutely cracking. You know, it's, there's a reason why this is Yamaha. It's one of the best selling bikes they do. Uh, you know, there's a reason for it and it's just an amazing run package. This third generation bike, the first one, yeah, they had a new few niggles and the second one, there was improvements to be made and they've, you know, it's lighter, faster, um, you know, more agile than ever before. And, you know, we've definitely experienced that. So I'm probably a bit sentimental about this bike as well, because it is actually the bike I learned how to wheelie on at Extreme Wheelie, and they run the Yamaha MT-09. And if you want to learn how to wheelie uh, any motorbike or this motorbike, in fact, you need to go and see the guys at Extreme Wheelie because they'll sort you right out. So we'll put the link in the description for those guys. We can be so positive about this bike and I'm sure anybody who ends up owning one of these is gonna be absolutely smitten yeah, and sure. super capable and yeah. just enjoy riding basically Definitely. because it is a stonking bike. Of course, it wouldn't be like a Nox review if we didn't pick out a couple of little bits and pieces because then that's that's not sort of balanced then but sure. um overall what a bike I mean, and, the sound of it alone as the, well oh, it the sound. sounds oh. incredible even with the oh, standard it's exhaust epic. it's it's beautiful it's <laughs> epic and and, it, and it's battling for me it's battling um for the crown of the middleweight naked kingship i suppose yes. So really hope you've enjoyed this one. Hope you've enjoyed this review. Please like, please let us know what you think in the comments section. Subscribe to the channel. Check out the Knox gear that we've been wearing on test and we'll see you next time.